Hello. Um, okay, so this homework help is for 7-1, Go Math, 1 through 8. So let's start with the first one. Number 1. It's a two-part problem. It says, three boxes of candles contain a total of 18 candles. Um, each box holds the same number of candles. Complete the table and graph the relationships. So I don't see any graph, so I'm, also, I'm guessing that it comes on the second part. So number one, um, for the first part, I'm going to go ahead and make the table. So two by four, two by four, one two three four and i'm gonna do just do b for boxes and c for candles so hopefully you guys can remember that three six and 48. now if you read it says three box of candles contain a total of eight Three boxes of candles contain a total of 18 candles. So where it says three boxes of candles, oh, sorry, right here, where it says three boxes, we know that it contains 18 candles. So we can go ahead and write 18 right here, okay? Um, all right, so, Right now, I'm going to do fill in the blanks. And since I can just go ahead and do times 2 here, I'm going to do the same thing, 18 times 2. And that gives me 36 right here. OK? All right, now, the next thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do something a little bit different. Before I simplify this uh, a ratio, um, because I know that 18 does not go evenly into 48. But before that, I'm going to try and do 48 divided by 18 to see maybe it goes in evenly, even if it's a decimal, okay? And no, it doesn't, okay? So then that means it's not going to work out. Why don't I try? Just I'm curious, 48 divided by 30. Yeah, that doesn't work either. So what I'm going to do now is in order for me to do this part, this part, I am actually going to simplify this ratio. So I know that 3 and 18, you can divide both of them by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 18 divided by 3 is 6. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with that. So instead of going from here to here, I'm, I'm going to go this way. And I know that 6 times 8 is 48. So then I can do 1 times 8, which gives me 8 here. So I am going to put in those numbers, 18, 36, and yeah. So that means it, you know, was correct. Now I need to graph the relationship. So if you look here, it gives you the three order pairs that it wants you to graph. The first one comes from the first ratio, 3 comma 18. 3 being the x coordinate, 18 being the y coordinate. x is the number of boxes, y coordinates are the number of candles, and then these are the other two. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the first one, then you see how this cursor changed to like a cross. Okay, so then what you do is first you go to 3 to the right, and then you go up to 18, and you click it. Okay, now I'm going to do the second one. Now 6, 36, so I'm going to go to 6, and then I'm going to go up to 36, click. Last one, 8, 48, so I'm going to go to 8, and go up to 48, and check. And that's correct. Now I'm going to move on to the next one. OK, number two. How do you represent a real world problems involving ratios and rates with tables and graphs? OK, let's take a look here. First, and remember, these you don't have to show work. First, find equivalent ratios, just like making a table. To make a table with different amounts of each quantity, then 
use the table columns because look, these are columns. Each column makes an order pair. 3 comma 18 is an order pair. 6 comma 36 is an order pair. So table columns, use the table columns to make order pairs, graph the order pairs and connect them with a line. Let's see if that's correct. Well done. Well done, Miss King. Okay, number three. The table shows information about the number of sweatshirts sold right here and money collected in a fundraiser for school athletic programs. Okay, so if you take a look here, you can see two sweatshirts sold, $22 collected. Three sweatshirts, $33. Hopefully you guys can see what the uh, unit rate is going to be for one sweatshirt, how much it is, okay? But that's not what they're asking. Find the rate of money collected per sweatshirt sold by co uh, completing the equation. Money collected uh, sweatshirt sold, if you look at the denominator, it says two sweatshirts. So if you find two sweatshirts, it says it's $22. So I'm going to put 22. Now, it says equals, and then it says one sweatshirt. So what do they want you to do? They want you to go from two to one, which is two divided by two is one. So I'm going to do 22 divided by two, which would give me 11. Okay. Now, just in case you're not sure, why don't I actually write that here? So we had to find the blank, $22, which, you know, it happens to be $22. Just going to write sweat. Okay. And then it says equals, and then another blank, one. Okay. Now, so what I, what I did to find this answer was simply looking at the table. For two sweatshirts, it was $22. But to find out the cost for one, I divided by two. And that's how I got $11 per sweatshirt. And so this one is $11 per sweatshirt. Okay, next one. Uh, the table shows the information about the number of sweatshirts sold and money collected. So same information as the previous one, but if you look at the numbers, the numbers have, have um, changed, okay? Two sweatshirts were $26 instead. Okay, complete the explanation about how to graph the information from the table. So to graph this, remember, this would be the x-axis uh, coordinate, and the money collected would be your y-coordinate. First, Write the information from the table as order pairs with um, sweatshirts sold being the x coordinate. Hmm, that's so I just talked about that, huh? And money collected being the y coordinate. Then graph the order pairs. Let's see. Yay! Okay. Now. Number five, the table shows the information. Okay, so again, sweatshirts sold and money collected. Again, the values have been different. And in this case, they actually give you the unit rate here too. $14 for one sweatshirt, okay? And then so on and so forth. One times three, 14 times three is 42, so on and so forth. Okay, how much money would be collected if 24 sweatshirts were sold? Drag and drop the numbers and um, terms into the correct boxes to complete the explanation. Okay, so this is number five. I'm going to use equivalent rates, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to use the unit rate, which is $14 for one sweatshirt, this one right here. I'm going to put money on top just because I like to do that. You know, for rates, you should always put money on top, even though the table says it otherwise. So I know that it's $14 for one sweatshirt. Here's my unit rate. Now, what are they asking for? It says, how much money would be collected if 24 sweatshirts were sold? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an equivalent rate with 24 sweatshirts. Where am I going to put 24? Well, since I have sweatshirts on the bottom, I'm going to put it also on the bottom. And once I find out this amount, that's going to be the answer. So now, how do I go from 1 to 24 using multiplicative relationship? It is times 24. So then if I do 14 times 24, that should give me how much it is for 24 sweatshirts. So I'm going to do 14 times 24. $336. Now, first box that. And you take a look. Oh, yay! I have 336 right here. 336 would be collected because the unit rate is $14 per sweatshirt sold. So, what did I do to find the answer? I multiplied by, uh, um, 14 by 24, right? So multiply the numbers of sweatshirts, which was 24, by 14 or 14 over 1. 14 over 1 means the same as 14, so it's nothing different, okay? Yay! Okay. Number 6. That okay. Finally, we're we're not doing the sweatshirts um, and the money collected anymore. The table shows the distance Randy drove on one day of her vacation. Find the distance Randy would have gone if she had driven for one more hour at the same rate. Complete the explanation of how you solved the problem. Now, if you take a look at the table, it says for one hour fifty miles, two hours. 100 miles, 3 hours, 150 miles, 4 hours, 200, 5 hours, 250. So I'm sure you can guess for one more hour, which means 6 hours, 300. But here's the thing. You really shouldn't be using, if you were thinking, oh, you're adding by 50, you really shouldn't be using that because um, Using adding or subtracting relationships in a table does not always work. So that's not what you should be relying on. So what I am going to do is I'm going to, again, use equivalent rates. Okay. So I'm going to use the um, one hour 50 miles. Okay. And set it equal to one more hour than the last one. So that's six hours blank miles okay and i is the correct abbreviation for miles okay if, if you just do m that's an abbreviation for meters so if you want to abbreviate miles you need to do mi all lowercase now one times six is six hours so if you do 50 times six then you get 300 miles, okay? So even though we knew the answer by looking at the pattern in this case, but you don't want to rely on that. To solve, first find the, I'm guessing unit rate, which is 50, then multiply, oh, not four, six and 50. Okay, remember I, I did 50 times 6, right? Let's see if that's correct. Okay, next one. Number 7. Okay, what is a real-life relationship that might be described by the graph? If you look at the graph and look at some of these points, these are not exact. They're not exactly on one of these side points except for this one. So I have a feeling that we might be or maybe not okay but if you take a look to the right is the time in weeks and to the i mean the x-axis is time in weeks the y-axis is time in days okay and then if you look let's see approximately three right here between two and four three weeks 
if you go up slightly over 20. So guess what? I think this is about um, number of weeks in number of days, like seven days per week. Let's look at the next one. Four day at uh, four weeks, if you go up, it's slightly under 30. Oh, I know that four weeks is um 28 days. Okay, so I'm guessing that's what it is. So A, number of weeks in any number of months. That's not true because there's nothing about months. B, the number of weeks that are in any number of days. I think that might be true. C, the number of weeks it takes to save $70. Now, that's not true because um, it has nothing to do with money. D, the number of days that are in any number of weeks. That could be true. So um, is the correct answer B or the correct answer D? Um, let's try D. If D is wrong, then B is the right answer. Okay? Yay! <laughs> okay. Um, so, you normally say in one week there are seven days. Okay? Um, you know, there are seven days in one week. Rather than you don't say like um, in... Like seven days, there is one week. Like that's not really how you say it. So this one, you kind of had to think a little bit. Okay. So even I, I felt like the correct answer is D. That's why I read all the way up to D, but I wasn't like 100% sure. Okay. All right. Last one. Okay. Now, when you look at a table and all these problems like this, you might think, oh my God, I cannot do this. Guess what? This problem probably isn't even that difficult. Okay, let's take a look. Complete the table, then find the rates, distance over time, and time over distance. So they just want you to flip them. Okay, list the ratios in the order in which they appear in the table. Now, first, I'm going to complete the table, and I know that here's one minute, five miles and then i have some filling the blanks to do so let's go ahead and make the table first this is number eight one by one two three four five or well, two by five so one two three four five let's do time distance okay um one and five so let's just do actually minutes, miles, just so that it's a little bit more clear. One minute, five miles. Two, five, 100. Since I have a unit rate right there already, five miles per minute, it's easy to do the rest. One times two, five times two, which is 10. 1 times 5, 5 times 5, which is 25. And then, now this time, 5 times 20 is 100. If you're not sure, you just try to do 100 divided by 5, okay? Then it gives you 20, and that's how you can figure out the other factor, okay? But 5 times 20 is 100. So if you do one times 20, that's 20. So 20 there, um, 10, 25. Oh, I don't get to check it though. I gotta do everything else. Okay, so then if I were to type all of these ratios, but put distance on top, time on the bottom, I'm gonna have to flip these. So one goes on the bottom, so I do five here. And then I need to be consistent. So the next one will be 10 over 2 instead of 2 over 10. And then 25 over 5. And 100 over 20. Okay. And then for the next one, since it's time over distance, I just need to copy 2 to 10. 2 to 10. 
25 to 25 and 20 to 100. So I guess this is a sort of like a important lesson for you to remember the order matters. If it says distance over time, then you need to do distance to time. They want you to time to distance and time on top distance on the bottom. And then last fill in the blank. Yes, each rate is equal to one to five. Hopefully I get that right. Yay. And I am done with the homework help. Thank you.